really, for the type of season that the, the Knicks had, they won 41 games, became a fourth seed, uh, to have a showing, a real disappointing um, postseason playoff. Uh, left a lot of questions for me unanswered as a Knicks fan. As a Knicks fan, uh, left a lot of questions unanswered. All right. So it starts with this. Uh, Alfred Payton. Now, we understand, I understand that there was a lot of fans getting on Twitter saying how disappointed they were. With, with Alfred Payton's play in game one and game two. But I never thought in a million years, I never thought in a million years they would bench Payton for three games. And I think that the benching of Payton hurt the team, regardless of what Payton did for the Knicks or how inconsistent he was or how consistent he was. Everything changed. I, I noticed a big change in the team. And if you go back and look, if you go back and look at these games, the Knicks played better with Peyton than without. They won a game with Peyton. They came within two points of winning game one. So if you look at all five games, regardless of if Peyton is trash or not, obviously he's not the best point guard in the world. We know that. But the Knicks did not, the Knicks only used one point guard after he left. And I, I, that's what being a head coach is all about. Not to allow the fans to dictate who, who's going to be playing on the team? Alfred Payton played 74 games starting for the Knicks, I believe. Something like that. Somewhere close to that. Uh, and you're going to change up the lineup in the most crucial, critical area er, era? Um, and I just don't like the way Thibodeau coached this team, regardless. And... Um, he could have used Pell. Um, he's he's not a great scorer, but he's a great defender. He blocks shots like it's going out of style. Thibodeau really uh, disappointed me in this in this um, in this uh, playoff, and it really disappointed me. Did Dan? Did you get a chance to check out any of this uh, Knicks yeah, versus the Hawks? Yeah, I watched most most of the games too. You know, when the Nets weren't weren't on. Yeah, I I, I kind of you know what I agree with you on on um, Peyton because when he started to start Derrick Rose, he had no real offense coming off the bench. You know, at least when you start Peyton, um, I mean Peyton, you have defense to really start the game, and that's why the Knicks. You know, started off pretty well because they had some type of defense and cohesion. So now, when Peyton leaves and the other starters leave, now you have Rose to be what you call the foundation of the bench uh, throughout the playoffs. But what you know, what happened was Thibodeau, him and Rose has a good you know uh, connection with each other. You know, in Minnesota, especially Chicago, and. He felt that he needed experience in the lineup. So he went with Rose, but you're right. As you can see, that failed. Rose should have been coming off the bench. Because, you know, you saw it in the, uh, what was it, game five, Rose was dead tired. He had nothing. He really had nothing in game five. I see you, Swaggy B. Um, yeah, I, did, I, I really don't like it. And then the other, the other part of this is, Rose is used to playing with the second unit. So That's now he I, don't know how to yep. get the ball to the starters. So now, so you have a situation where you have Rose, who's always played with the second unit most of the season. He don't even know how to get the ball 
to Randall, and, and especially in these critical situations. You know that Atlanta's going to bring their A game defensively, and you have you have these guys coming in, who you know, uh, you have who you have Rose, who don't know how to get to the ball to Randall in the spots where he needs to get the ball. If you if you watch, if you go back and watch these games, Randall usually usually gets the ball when when Randall's hot and he's percolating. He's usually at the top of the key. He got the ball at the top of the key. With Rose in there, that didn't happen one time. When Rose was, if go back and look at those three, four games. Randall was frustrated because he wasn't getting the ball to the spots where he needed. So, it's a mess. It's a, it's a, it, it was a mess. The players also, were, and to be a also, head coach and do this, it's crazy. Yeah? Mike, also, if you notice in the game when Rose was in there with the starting lineup, uh, that guy, uh, Badanovich, he was eating up Rose on defense. Rose couldn't handle either, um, uh, Trey Young or Badanovich on defense. So you really, that's when you need Peyton in there, who's a, you know, pretty decent sized guard to guard up. So that's what was lost when they put Rose in the starting lineup. Yeah, and then not even put him, they benched him totally. Like you, you, you only have one point guard. So then now it becomes even more ridiculous because you got, you got, uh, quickly and Burks run that two guards. They're both shooting guards. You got two guys playing out of position, playing point guard when they're not supposed to be playing. It would, it became worse. Once I saw Peyton running the point, I mean, quickly running the point, I was like, what the heck is this? And then um, Burks running the point. I mean, these guys can play point just like John Starks could play a little point. That's, that's the extent of it. Starks played some point back in the day. But I, I've never seen Starks in, in the playoffs playing point guard. Starks played some point the similar way that Burks and quickly played some point. But the point I'm making is Starks could play some point, but Riley was not stupid enough Riley's one of the best coaches of all time. He would have never used Starks as a point guard in the playoffs, regardless whoever was hurt. Riley would have found a point guard in the seat in the in the, in the G League to bring up to play in the playoffs rather than use a player out of position. So that's it, man. I, 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 this is this this goes on Thibodeau. I hope they learn some lessons. From this. So the other part of this next deal, this next story, is this superstar chasing nonsense. Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard. Just calling out dudes' names. Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard to the Knicks. Do you know how much money he costs? The Knicks, the Knicks payroll is $90 million. Just to give you an under, just to give you some understanding of what's going on, because people really don't understand the NBA. Um. Uh. Damian Lillard makes forty-four million. The Knicks payroll was ninety million this year, so the Knicks gonna have to, if the Knicks want Damian Lillard, they have to trade. $45 million worth of players to Portland. That's how we're going to get Lillard. That's how it goes in the NBA. So if you want seven or eight players off this team for a guy over 30, then do it. It is crazy talk. And then remember, I'm going to tell you this. I'm not going to put no names out there because I don't do that. But the same people that are telling you Damian Lillard is going to be on this team are the same people who told you Westbrook was going to be on the Knicks. Remember that now. 
In September last summer, they were telling you Westbrook, CP3, and all these other dudes, all these old guys that make a bunch of money that nobody wants. And I hope, hope y'all fans get it. Stop running behind these 30-year-old guys that make 50, 40, 50 million. The Knicks can't afford that. They have to give up their whole roster. Let me say it again. The Knicks will have to give up their whole roster for Damian Lillard. So, and listen, I'm going to tell y'all a little story. I meant, I wanted to say this because I want to get this out there. Everybody talk about the Isaiah Thomas years. I, it, it, I'm going to tell you, I'm, gonna tell, I'm telling you this for a reason. Everybody want to talk about the Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah got a bad rap in this town. They always want to tell you what the Knicks did under Isaiah Thomas, but they don't want to tell you the whole story. The whole story was, Isaiah Thomas, when he first got here, he went and got Stephon Marbury. He traded for Stephon Marbury. Allen Houston was hurt. The, 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 when Stephon Marbury, it was supposed to be a team, you had two top guards in the league. It never came to fruition because ne when Isaiah came here, nobody knew that Allen Houston was done. He, was, he had a career-ending injury. He came back for three years, every year. Preseason started with Allen Houston, and then he drifted away every year. Nobody knew the extent of Allen Houston's injuries. So I don't want this to happen again. I don't want us to trade for Damian Lillard or some of these old guys, Westbrook or CP3 or any of these guys, and then end up having to suck his contract. And then the other part of the Allen Houston deal, they had just signed Allen Houston to a $100 million contract, and it, it, it stifled the Knicks. So everybody want to blame Isaiah Thomas, but they don't want to tell that other story about Allen Houston. And Isaiah got all the blame. Because the Knicks didn't make, the Knicks made the play, the Knicks made the playoffs the first year, because I went to the last game. They got swept. Dan, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yo, you agree with this? Oh, yeah, I want to talk. I want to let you think. I want to shout some people out, but go ahead. You remember those yeah. stuff on Marbury mm -hmm. years? Yeah, it was supposed to be Marbury and um, Allen Houston in the backcourt. And everybody in New York, you know, they wanted to see it. But, you know, Allen Houston kept getting hurt, you know? Yeah, Allen Houston was hurt. I also mm -hmm. want to shout.